Are your troops sitting around the castle, not fighting, getting fat and lazy? Are you struggling on RSS to make more to go to war? Well, let's turn these soldiers from this into this. Let's go. <laughs> What's going on guys, it's your boy Worthy Prince coming at ya with another Lords Mobile video and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about resources or RSS as we also know them as. How exactly can you make your guild resource rich so whether it's healing, troop training or a heavy research you need to start, how exactly do you get that resource nice and quick where you haven't got to spend days trying to gather for it? Well that's exactly what we're going to get into right now guys. Now the first step, the first thing you need to do is set up a guild bank and it needs to be the R5 that takes control of that guild bank, maybe also allowing a trusted R4 to also have the login. And the guild bank needs to be shielded at all times guys, you know, golden rule, make sure everybody in the guild who has gift mode is gifting shields to that bank regularly so that it can stay shielded at all times. Now within your guild bank, what do you need to be working on? Well, let's get to the first thing. And the first thing is going to be the trading post. This is vital for any guild bank. You need to make sure you get this to level 25 as soon as possible because it allows you to send more RSS at level 25, 3 million, and your tax rate actually drops down to 7.6%, which is pretty good. The next thing you need to do, guys, is research army leadership, bigger bags, tax break, and forced march because this is going to allow you to send even more i know that if you max out bigger bags you can actually send up to six million resource per route which is pretty good tax break will make you send it again cheaper saving you more rss and of course the forced march will allow you to send that rss quicker to your members so these are the ones you really need to get to and focus on when it comes to the research on your bank Okay guys, the next thing you need to do is make sure that everybody is hyper farming. If you are experienced the Lords Mobile, then you'll know exactly what that is. But if you're a newer member to the game, then let me quickly explain it to you. Hyper farming is when everybody in your guild produces one type of RSS. As you can see, I'm setting up my main account to produce stone. If I click on one of these buildings, you can see I'm producing 1.8 million stone per hour. That's faster than what you can gather, I'm sure and 32.6 million is what I can hold at any given time. So every time I get to 32.6, I have to send that stone away to enable my turf to produce more. So I'm having to empty that more than once a day. And you have to send the percentage of that to the bank. I know some people like to keep hold of their RSS and then maybe sell that to a number member for maybe some gifts like some speed ups and stuff like that, doing a little trade, which is absolutely fine. But just make sure that you are sending a percentage of that to the bank because you need your guild to have that, you know, healing. Remember what I told you, healing, training, all that kind of stuff. So make sure that you are sending a percentage to the bank. Now, you need to make sure that you keep these three buildings here okay the lumber mill the farm and the mines because if you do change your base around a bit you don't want to have to rebuild these again guys so just keep those three there unless you're 100 percent certain you're not going to need them then take them away okay so for those that don't know how to hyper farm because it's all well and good me saying you know just sit there and build one of the rss buildings yeah but you know, there's other things you need to do you need to make sure you're building the right gear to boost that further you need to make sure that you're training the right heroes that also give you an extra boost on that rss so guys drum roll please okay get ready for the very brief and quick 101 guide to heroes what heroes do you need to level up for the rss you have chosen Okay, so introducing to my right, and we're gonna start off with Stone. The fishy, the smelling delicious. He's got big lips, but plenty of love. Please welcome Sea Squire. <laughs> so that's my Sea Squire, he's there, and you need to make sure that you go with him if you are gonna do Stone, level him up to gold ASAP. And the second hero we're gonna introduce, he's mean, he's grumpy, he likes his sleep on the weekends, and he doesn't believe in Sabbath. He is Mr. Death Knight. There we go, to the left, we got Mr. Death Knight. He's the other one that does stone 150%. You know get him guys he'll help you a lot when it comes to your stone between the two of these 300 percent so there you go there's your heroes you need to focus on if you want to do stone like me okay moving on to timber okay now this is one of the most popular ones when you see the heroes you might understand why so without further ado to the right i am introducing she looks pretty good she's quite sassy and you know she's dressed to impress although i would uh i would be careful because that does look quite sharp i would 
like to introduce to you now, without further ado, Miss Rose Knight. There we go, there she is. So go with her guys, 150% timber production, unlock her in the hero chapters. It's quite difficult, you know, to get her unlocked straight away. It takes a little while, but you know, grind it out and get her unlocked as soon as possible. And the second hero to do timber, introducing to my left, She's sassy, she's saucy, she's got a collection of whips made out of leather, metal, and uh, uh, bamboo, I think? I don't know, she told me once. Did she? Oh, that's not good. <laughs> anyway, to my left, introducing Incinerator. <laughs> so these two here, Incinerator, Rose Knight, as you can see, this is popular choice because these two are fantastic in the Colosseum. And Rose Knight is, of course, fantastic to attack with. So, these are your two heroes for timber production. And last but not least, we move on to Ore, which is one of those RSS that I always am needing. I'm sure you are too. Let's get on with the hero. So, to my right this time, we've got the Falumptuous, the Scrumptious. She's a ginger nut with a twist. It is Tracker. There we go, so we got Tracker. She's our hero that does some more, so get her, level her up, and get her gold. She'll give you that 150%. And to my left, Little Miss Perk and herself, doesn't like to be brushed, but likes a bath and a saucer of milk every now and then. It is D -d 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 Death Archer. <laughs> so get Death Archer and she will 100% sort you out when it comes to ore, 150%, okay? And there's my 101 guide to heroes to Hyper Whip. Okay guys, so you've trained the right heroes, now you need to build the right gear. So we're going to take a look in the workshop to find out what gear boosts that RSS production even further. So let's go to all equipment and let's click on a helmet and let's change the filter to one of the resource uh, production rate, which is going to be stone first of all. Now as you can see there's no helmet, there's no chest piece, but there is legs. The gargantuan belt will give you that stone production boost. The main hand we don't have one, the off hand we don't have one, but we do have an accessory which is the worm seal. So for stone production, the gargantuan belt and the worm seal. Okay, so we're switching over to timber and as you can see, that one of the new pieces of gear from the hard rocks uh, set, the coarse helm actually gives you the timber production rate which is fantastic. There is not a chest piece, there's no legs, main hand is the worm rod, so that's good for your timber production. Off hand we've got the terror blade and on the accessories it's burning scrolls. So there's actually quite a lot of gear that will help you boost your timber production even further. And lastly we move on to the ore. As you can see there is no helmet, there is no chest piece, there is legs however on the new hard rock set. The craggy creaves will give you a nice ore production boost. Main hand we don't have one, off hand no, and again accessories it's going to be the terror vial. So there's a quite a few pieces there including the new set that you can actually boost your RSS for your ore production. One of the other areas that people do tend to forget about as well is the actual turf boosts you can apply. If you go into the boost section on your turf, you can find all of the boosts available and they all give you a nice 25% boost that lasts for 24 hours. So make sure you click one of those as well. Lastly guys, when it comes to boosting your RSS, the familiar area holds an absolute ton of boosts. I'll quickly go through those with you right now. So Oak Root, for example, will give you a fantastic timber production boost. Moving up, you've got Engineer that will give you a really nice ore production boost. And these are ones on the first set of tier packs, so that's pretty easy to get. This one's a slightly higher tier level. Krabby gives you an ore production boost, as well as giving you Rocky Resolve, which gives you an experience boost, so that's quite nice. Moving up, you've also got Magma Lord as well. That's a very nice stone production boost. And if we go a bit further up, we can find Totem Pest, who's going to give you another timber production boost, as well as a Ship Ahoy, which is resetting the cargo ship, which can actually be quite handy for things like Guild Fest. And if we go up further still, we can see Boulder, who gives you another stone production boost, and also a secondary overtime, which will allow you to completely clear your help requests for a construction. So there's a ton of familiars for you to look at and level up to help you with your RSS production, especially if you've already completed the ones you want for attacking and things like that. Then go and work on your production one for your RSS that you're producing. And that, guys, concludes our guide to telling you exactly how your guild 
can never run out of RSS and be resource rich going forward to help you and all of your players. If you all kind of follow this guide and get all your guildmates working together to produce as much RSS as possible, you and your guild are absolutely going to benefit from it. Well, if you enjoyed this video, guys, don't forget to leave a like and a comment. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, guys, stay safe and peace out.